I'm Greg Shoemaker, and I'm here standing next to a drag boat racing legend, Larry Schwabenland. Larry, I started back in 1972. When did you start drag boat racing? Uh, 1957. And when you got started, what was some of the what was the boats? What were the boats running for speed, and what kind of boat did you start out in? I started out in a uh, unblown gas flat bottom. And what was and the speeds on those back 80, in those? 84 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty impressive. Now, unblown gas, so you were running uh, fuel injection or carburation back Carburetors, yeah. The boat belonged to uh, John Seamus, who was uh, one of the originators, along with uh, Jack Davidson, who built the built the hull, of course, the Sanger boat. So it was a Sanger you started off with? Yes, I did. And then from the Sangers, you moved on up into, you ran unblown gas there for a while, then you, you stepped up into uh, the next class? The next step was top fuel. Top fuel. Flat bottom, yes. You ran a top fuel flat bottom. Right. And then from there? Uh, then we ended up building a hydro and uh, from there just kept going. One of the things about drag boat racing, you know, we could have gone in different directions. We could have we could have raced cars. We could have done something else. But did you ever think about why you were attracted to, to the boat racing itself? Well, uh, I grew up in Fresno and the Sanger boats were built in, obviously, in the town of Sanger originally. Later, to moved to Fresno. And uh, so I became a, a, uh, a hanger on around and kind of grew in it in that manner. Were you into water sports prior to? Not really. Not really. Water skiing and, yeah. and that sort of thing, but no, no boat racing. Well, you had Millerton up in that area. You had the Kings River. All those were pretty, you probably had quite a few unorganized drag boat races up in there. Yeah, we did a little bit of that. Yeah, there was there were some of those. Now, looking back, I know that you experienced, I, I believe, one accident. Did you have any real bad crashes uh, that you were involved in? Yeah, the, the uh, I tipped them over a few times, but... Uh, I had a pretty bad one in 73, and and uh, it was pretty uh, pretty tough on me. We took a couple of years to recuperate, or a year and a half anyway, and uh, left me with a, a little bit of a limp, but I'm still alive, so I guess it's okay. You know, I've had the opportunity to race at a lot of courses throughout my years of drag boat racing. Is there any one particular course that you really stands out in your mind that you enjoyed early on in the early years? Well, yeah, Long Beach Marine Stadium was always a favorite. <laughs> Uh, the water was good, uh, traditionally, uh, course was a little uh, little crowded, uh, and obviously too crowded for today's by today's standards, but uh, uh, it was an excellent place to race, uh, downtown where you could draw a lot of folks, it was good for the crowds and a whole bit. You know, you, you look back at places like Turlock, and uh, we let, raced at Los Bonos. I don't know if you were involved. Were you involved in drag boat racing at Los Bonos? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't participate there. But Turlock, were you? Turlock, many years. Oakland. There. Oakland. Uh, kind of tell me about Oakland. I mean, that was one course that I always heard a lot about. What was it like at Oakland? Oakland was fine. Uh, the uh, water was usually good, and uh, we did well there. Uh, Ran over 205 miles an hour there in a, hi in a hydro back in 1971. That's pretty good for the, by those oh, standards. Oh, sure, sure. And uh, we ran 155 in a flat bottom. So uh, that was a good course. And uh, uh, same thing there. It was in, in the metropolitan area where they, they could draw a lot of folks. You know, there was. it seems to me there was just a different cut of guys. You know, you, the blown fuel hydro class has survived, but... You know, throughout the years, blown fuel flat bottom. I can remember guys getting in those things. That that was just a real unique ride. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. That's a, they, they, those were always experiences. You know, you look at the guys in top alcohol now, and they're out there running, you know, some pretty good speeds with those alcohol boats. But the violence that's generated in a top fuel boat or a top fuel flat bottom had to be quite an experience. Yeah, they're uh, they're probably uh, were probably much tougher to drive. Uh, we were lucky; we did pretty well with it. Uh, we ran uh, for a long, long time. I had about 18 years of drag racing, and uh, as a result, I uh, still alive, and that's, that's yeah. pretty good. You know, it, you look at you look at the, the way drag racing has evolved through the years. What do you think is probably the most important? thing that has transpired in drag boat racing up until this point in time? Well, one big one big feature is the capsule thing now. That's added a lot to the safety part of it. And uh, injuries are uh, somewhat less. Uh, I, I guess that's probably the most important. 
big innovation. For the safety factor. For the safety factor, right. Well, I think that's about it for today. I'm here with Larry Schwabenland, and uh, we'll move on to the next guest. Okay, I'm Larry Schwabenland. I'm here with Jack Davidson from Sanger Boats, the owner and founder. And uh, we're going to do a little brief interview here and a question or two. Jack, tell us when you uh, when you first got started and how it began. Well, of course, I started, I think, in 55 uh, as a hobby and, and really liked the and it evolved from uh, from maybe a radiator shop, is that right? Well, it did that all right, but the, the first boat I saw at Millerton with a Glenwood with a Chrysler in it, it was over. That was it. That uh, the bug bit you at that yeah, time? Yeah, that was it. Was over. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and and so you started building boats, and where did you start? In Sanger. In Sanger yeah. at uh, at the radiator shop at that time. Sure. Yes. And from there it grew to uh, what is now one of the largest in the nation. Uh, is that correct? Well, we have a hundred employees. That's a that's a fair amount. And uh, today, uh, or over the years, you've built uh, all types of drag boats. What uh, what was your favorite, perhaps, back then? Well, probably my favorite was the Hydro you and I uh, ran. That, that had to be the favorite. Yeah, the the Climax boat yeah, back when. Sure. Yes, sure. and you made a lot of flat. You started with the flat bottoms, yeah. and uh, graduated into the hydros and. Uh, uh, on up and now into catamarans. Uh, tell us about that a little bit. Well, the cat was, you know, that, I, I really like cats, of course, and, and did that and, and still doing it. You know, I'm building a 32 cat right now. You're in the process of a 32 yeah. cat? Yeah, and just because I like it. And, uh, what else is there? <laughs> I'm just but, happy to be born when the 55 Chevy was born. <laughs> well, or uh, not born, but around. Anyway, you've survived a lot of ups and downs yeah. and uh, oh, a yeah. uh, boat race or two over the years. Yeah. Uh, tell us about some of the races that you favored and, and uh, I, I know very well, of course, that you started driving uh, and when did you graduate into just owning? When you took my seat. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was your favorite race course? Oh, for Long Beach, of course. Yeah. Long Beach Marine Stadium. Oh, yeah. Well, that's great. What do you... What are you thinking about the cat now that uh, you're going to do a new 32-footer? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just an offshore uh, pleasure boat. You know. Hamley Cat? Yeah, 100 mile an hour. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, why that's did, great. Why did you get out of uh, the drag boat racing? And uh, out of building the smaller boats? I, I, I think it was a liability. And, and, and people getting killed was just not getting it. You know, I, one year I think nine people got killed drag racing. And, and I figured, you know what, this is not for me anymore. Yeah, it, uh, drag boat racing did take its toll, and uh, and that would be a reason, obviously, to taper off. Did you develop the first runner bottom? Well, I don't know, maybe. What what, what year, or approximately, were you messing with the uh, runner bottom idea? Right from the beginning. I think I was gold winging him in 55. We were just talking about that the other day. Didn't Bill Foster have one of the first uh, circle racing runner bottoms? Yeah, LaRue. Jim LaRue. Oh, no, not Jim. Bob LaRue. Bob LaRue. That's when we got in circle boats. Pretty heavy. Billy B, uh, do you have any questions for Sanger Jack? <laughs> I sure don't, Jerry. Sorry about that. <laughs> he worked for us. Did he? Yeah. And then what, why did you fire him? <laughs> he was probably goofing off. <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't, we probably didn't fire him. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, everything will go well in your new venture with a 32 cat. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Bruce Boxleitner, what brings you out to a, a racer's reunion? <laughs> you. I'm Greg Shoemaker. I'm here with uh, Howard Brown of Howard Boats. Howard, I know you. I know you're retired now, but boy, I'll tell you what. You got to have a vast resource of knowledge from all the years that you've been involved in racing. Yeah, I worked at it for 30 years, and uh, finally figured that was long enough, and I sold it and retired. So when did you start? In 1959. And were you? And back then, you were obviously building all wood boats. Yeah, I started out. Well, I started in '57, actually, uh, building wood boats as a as a hobby, and then I. Rented a small building, started out in 1959 building wood boats, and then 61 is when I decided to build a plug 
take a mold off of and build fiberglass boats, which I knew nothing about. <laughs> so, well, uh, when you got you got started in the boat business, were you building for racing or were you building for pleasure? No, I built them for pleasure. And I always knew I, the boat went fast for the power I had in it. And I, I tried for a year or more to get somebody to put a blown motor in it to go 100 miles an hour. I couldn't find anybody to do it, so I ended up I bought a used motor from Keith Black, a 392 blown fuel Chrysler, and uh, went out in the first time out with it, we broke the blown fuel flat bottom record and three consistent months after that we up the record to the record was 111 11 and a quarter mile joke with Joe Graffio held in a Sanger and the first race I went to I ran a 114 at uh, ski land in Paris oh yeah and yeah. then uh, the next month we had a race every month there and the next month uh, I went out to raise the record to 124 and the third month I went out and raised it to 137.82 and I figured that's fast enough, so I just slowed down my drag race for pleasure. Were you driving at this point in time? Yeah, I always drove my boat. Okay, and then uh, did, when you finally, did, was there a time that you stepped out of the seat and had somebody else start driving for yes, you? Yes, uh, that's when I did the blown fuel hydro. Okay, and who started driving for you then? Uh, yeah. Well, Dwight Hay Bales drove. Oh yes, Dwight Bales. Down yeah. and out, I built a boat. Uh, the original Down and Out got crashed, and then I built one of my hydros, and we named it Down and Out, the same paint job, which Dwight Hay Bales drove, and then uh, uh, then uh, we renamed the boat to Out of Sight, and uh, that was that set a lot of records. And then the drivers for that was Dennis Palaccia, Dennis Palaccia, yeah. Gary Owens, and then uh, the kid that ended up. I let him go because he was sort of reckless. Uh, Kenny McIntosh. He oh, got Kenny killed Ma yes, at I mean, Oakland. At uh, Oakland, right? It, it, I, he was wasn't he involved in a real bad crash in Oakland? Oh yeah, he went up. He drove. He was driving a. Uh, it don't make no difference the boat. But anyway, he got the boat up on the side and just stayed with it. And, uh, he had got he, he drowned and he got paralyzed. Paralyzed, yeah, I remember that. Hospital, sure. And eventually, yeah. he died. You know, thinking back through all the years of, of 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 your racing career, does any one thing stand out in your mind? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the first 137 mile an hour running a flat bottom at <laughs> ski land. That probably had to put a real thrill in you. Oh man, the spectators jumping up and down, they towed me back, you know, that's the highlight of my life. Now, back in those days, we had Ski Land, uh, Long Beach Marine Stadium. Uh, did, were you guys racing up at Bakersfield at that time? Yeah, lots of times. Uh -huh. yeah. In fact, uh, I flipped my boat, my blown fuel flat bottom at in, in Bakersfield. And uh, then again, at, at Parker, Arizona. And uh, well, we went to all the races. We went to Reading, uh, Bakersfield, and, and the Blown Fuel Hydro. We just traveled the country. We went back to Oklahoma, uh, North Carolina. If any place was a race, we just went racing. You know, you, you look at you look at boat racing today, and you look at it back there. And what was the what was the one reason why you stayed involved with boat racing? Why didn't you ever move to cars or do something different? What was it? The people, the, uh, the friends you made, the finest people I ever met were boat racers. And then you know, I was born and raised on the Detroit River, and I used to go down and watch the Unlimited Hydros run years and years ago, and Miss Pepsi and such crust and boats like that, which are long. You know, we're talking sure. about the 30s. You know, sure. The 40s, and I just uh, I'm a Pisces, and I guess I just gonna be around water all the time. Well, so the seed got planted at a very early age. True. Yeah. Well, Howard, it's been really nice talking with you. All right. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thank uh, you. My pleasure. Thank you. All you right. bet. Beautiful. Oh, it's been a long it. time. It sure has. It sure has. <laughs> yeah. Can you remember how long I get? <laughs> Anyways, this is 25 years. This is about. Anyway. At least, um, least yeah. 25. Howard. Howard. I know this is a. This is probably started Howard Boats. Is Mary still around the area? Yeah, she's yeah. in uh, La Quinta. Yeah. How oh, come you call it Howard Boats hear from her? instead of Brown Boats? Because then he would have. Yeah, this know. is Steve McElroy, and this is Harlan Orn. Uh, we've been friends for a long time, and uh, I'm kind of curious in all our friendships, we've never really talked how this whole thing got started. On uh, 1956, uh, one of the best boat builders around, uh, Joe Mandela, passed away. And my uncle had purchased a boat from him and knew him very well, so he ended up buying the company from Mary Mandela. In January of uh, 57, I started building Wood Mandela's full time. And over a period of four years, we built 54 boats. And the one we're standing in front of is uh, 
number 55 in the uh, Wood Mandela line. I was uh, doing a job for Sanger Jack up in Fresno and my daughter worked in the office. She uh, came out and watched me on her breaks and commented that she knew what I did, but she had never seen me do it. So I came home and uh, started building this boat. There never were any uh, plans for the Wood Mandela's. Uh, the patterns were thrown away in the uh, mid-60s, so I had to draw the plans for this boat uh, from memory. And I uh, made patterns for it and built it over a period of a couple of years. Uh, we planned to uh, put a uh, 1958 Oldsmobile engine in it with a, a 60 Casale V-Drive. Uh, the engine going in the boat I bought from Steve and uh, we're going to try to get as uh, close to original 58 as we can. Uh, Paul Stratton did the upholstery for it. And uh, we're ready to, ready to get back into the water. You're still, you're still doing wood decks and you still do plugs for manufacturers or, or things like that, don't you? Uh, yes, I still do uh, original tooling for manufacturers. Uh, Usually the guy doing the tooling's name doesn't get in the books because uh, the manufacturers uh, have their name on the boat, which is fine with me, as long as their checks are good. The uh, wood decks we're doing now is uh, on restoration projects, uh, everything from uh, marathon uh, GN boats to uh, family ski boats. We've got a, uh, a Jones Hydro that is scheduled to be restored. Uh, they're planning on running a uh, V12 Jaguar engine in a 18-foot uh, Jones Hydro as a uh, scale model uh, unlimited hydroplane. You know, I noticed in a couple of the ads recently that you are looking for a specific old race boat. Is this a boat that you ran or a boat that you built? Well, before I opened my shop, I uh, built a hydroplane. In fact, I just met uh, Bud Meyer here and we ran a motor that he built. We circle raced with the boat uh, with a four-cylinder Chevy. The uh, boat was good enough for second and third place but uh, and he was given a boat to put his motor in and I was without a motor and some friends came over with a uh, 327 Chevy uh, motor that was out of a 37 drag race uh, Chevy Coupe. We put the boat uh, and the motor together and uh, went drag racing with it. Uh, our first competition was at the Long Beach Marine Stadium in uh, 1965, an APBA gas only meet, and we were fortunate enough to set the uh, unblown gas uh, hydro record. Uh, we ran 107 miles an hour and our maximum speed uh, was 117, and uh, that was quite a thrill to go out there with a circle race boat and your first drag race meet to set a record. You know, this, this reunion that Richard's put together, the first annual boat racers reunion, is quite a thing, and you see a lot of old faces here. Um, one of the questions that I think about is what was your favorite race course? I know I used to love the beach down at Long Beach because of the one pin turns and being a circle racer, but how about you? Do you, do you have a favorite race course? Uh, I was usually the builder, so I, I've actually only driven a few race courses, but uh, I know the drivers like Long Beach, and for the spectators it was great, and if you were trying to see how your boat r rode, you were close enough to it, you could tell what the boat was doing and if, what you needed to change for the next run. Hey, I enjoyed this. Thank you much. Enjoy the day, and uh, we'll talk later. Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, this is Steve McElroy, and this is Jerry Wright, an old friend and boat builder from long ago, and uh, boy, it's good to see you here. You know, we talked about three, four weeks ago, and I sent you the application, and I'm glad to see you did make it. Uh, tell us a little bit about how when you got started in this business. Well, I well when I uh, started in the boat business, uh, those are important. Well, I was originally bolting uh, 
V-Drive boats together for Kinslaughter. <laughs> and I uh, had a partner, uh, Bob Byrne. And then uh, he and I split up, and I had uh, Harlan Oren build me a plug. And from then on, I started building flat bottom V-Drives. And then we just progressed into uh, uh, into the jet boats and uh, and just progressed on up to where we were building uh, quite a few boats a day. And uh, then the 73 energy crisis put me to my knees. <laughs> and so uh, then we moved to Texas and we've been down there about uh, 20 some years now. I'm in the boat repair business down there. I, I remember when I first met you, uh, it was down you and um, Bob Burns. You guys had inboard specialties. Yeah, right. Right. And I came and called on you. I was working for Aero Marine Company in those days. Right. And uh, and then you guys parted company and you did your own thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you came. And well, I remember uh, some of the famous jet boats that you had. Yeah, we used to do a lot of jet boat racing. Uh, we built uh, the Menace, then we built the uh, Rated X boat, which uh, Phil Henderson had the engine, and I owned the boat, and Warren Robin, and uh, did the engine work on it. And we ran that for five or six years. And, and we built several different versions of that rated X. We had a hydro hydro for a while and then we had the rated X for a, you know the old V bottom. These were mostly drag racing boats. Drag boats. Yeah. Jerry enjoy the day. Well glad thank you made it. Glad, glad Terry came out with you. Thank you. It's tremendous. Well, I'm Greg Shoemaker, and I'm standing here with Rudy Ramos. Rudy's in the Boat Racing Hall of Fame. And Rudy, when did you get started in the sport of boat racing? 52. And in 1952, what was the first boat that you built? What kind of boat did you build? The Mandela. A Mandela. With Mandela. Yeah, it was all wood. All wood. And then when you when you evolved from the wood, how long did it take you to build the fiberglass boats? About a week. Oh. <laughs> and how long did it take you to build a wood boat? Uh, they were building one a month for for me at that time. You know, we're standing we're eleven of them. We're standing behind a boat right here. Behind us is a boat. It's an old racing craft. And I believe it's got an Allison engine in it. Looks like Weber carburation. Can you tell me a little bit about this boat? Yes, it, uh, I won the first Salton Sea 500 mile race in one of my 16 foot glass boats. And uh, then I had to sit in a bathtub for about six hours to get rid of the blood on my back. So I said, it's gotta be an easier way to do it. So I went and designed this boat and built it. And we built it, finished it in 400 hours from scratch to finish. And the guys never went home, took a salt and say they wanted to race. Right off the trail. You know, one thing unique, I mean, we've seen the Allison engines, but one of the things that we haven't seen is the V drive. The V drive is huge. huge. What, what, what did you do? How did you get Andy to build that V drive? Well, we built all the cases for Andy Cazale. Uh, when he started, we built all the cases. And my father had an aircraft foundry. And so I wanted a gearbox, and he designed it, we cast, we built a pattern for a we cast, a 236% overdrive, and it was the first one, the big one that Andy ever built. Well, after you built the boat, and you ran the salt, did you run the salt and C500 with this boat? Yes. How did you do with this boat after you built it? I won, first you, time in the water. First time in the water. First time in the water, I won. And, and, and I take it your back wasn't nearly as sore as the first Not time. <laughs> Big grin on my face. You know, back in those days of the Salt and Sea 500, how many boats would you get to actively participate in that race? About 130. 130 about boats. 130 boats. At and time. were they were they different classes of boats that uh, they ran? Yeah, outboards and boards only. Really? Yeah. And most of the guys were coming out of Southern California. All Southern you, California. Uh, all Southern California. I brought some out of Tennessee and Florida, and I, I brought uh, Gordon Cooper, astronaut, AJ Foyt. 
Cornelia Jones, I brought all those into this five month operation. Really? Really? Well, you know, you, you've, been in the, you've been in the boat building business for a number of years. Do you have something that really stands out in your mind as something real memorable or, memorable or an achievement that you did through those years? All of it. All of it. You enjoyed every minute every of minute. it. Every minute. You know, and I've asked this question to the other guys, but what attracted you to boat racing? Why did you stick with the boats? You could have done anything else. Why did you stick with the boats? Was it the people? Boats. There weren't any boats at that time. I had the first V-drive flat bottom ever. Oh, really? Yes. So, it, so the... Started trip. So when you produced the first V-drive, uh, you guys actually produced the actual first V-drive and put it in a boat? Right. I'll be done. Now, did you stay in, did you enjoy the people that you raced with? Was that part of it too? I did. A lot of good friends that you've made? A lot made. of good friends. I'm still here. Yeah. yeah. Well, Had a know, great time. R Rudy, I really want to thank you for your time. And, uh, you know, next year, I hope we can do this again. Okay. okay? Thank you very much. How many boats have you painted in your lifetime? <laughs> Three. None. Three. And, all and of two of them are still in the shop. Yeah. <laughs> well, look That's who's the popping, truth. dude. That's the truth. Okay. Yeah, you want to open a can of worms, dude? <laughs> Where were you on Thursday? He's painting Not in the shop. You were playing from, golf. I wasn't. No, Is Greg there? Oh, no. He's had an appointment today. Outside you call, appointment. You call El Prado. Oh, he you make He went up at 10.15. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> but yeah, he's, going golf. he's painted three boats too. Bruce Boxliner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Bruce Bruce I, find, I find out about it. <laughs> Keep it up, 10 news. The car getting me this. out. I said, yeah, well, they got that. Oh, Jerry wants to interview you right here. Oh, is this, is this? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kenny Wilcox, and I'm here at the Antique Boat Regatta with Mike Leach. Now, there's not a lot of homosexuals in boat racing. How did you get involved? <laughs> uh, Tommy Martin got me uh, involved. Well, I talked to Tom, and he said you had a lot of friends up here. <laughs> Boy, I'm kind of speechless now, Kenny, but that one right there kind of left me uh, with nothing much to say. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, this is Rick Williams. Uh, he's the owner of uh, the Trojan Ghost, and he had quite a few guys involved in that team. Uh, Rick, what, was, yeah. what kind of haul was that? Yeah, that was first off, I started with a, with a lady craft, and I had a lady, then I went to Sanger, and it seemed like the Sanger was working the best. That was still the, the best K boat that ever hit the water. I still got records at the Long Beach Marine Stadium at 132 by Bob Long, and it was a fast boat. And it's, uh, Who were some of the best drivers you had? I've, I had, to start off with, I had the late Gordon Jennings. First boat had the late Gordon Jennings. And then I went to Vic Van Ella. There, he was a tiger. And then from, I went to Bob Long, from Bob Long, and then I went to Ronnie Bolton, and here's the Charger. I think as, as far as drivers are concerned, I think that I had the cream of the crop. And then after that, uh, Rick, what, what did you do? Didn't you get a drag boat? Uh... Well, then I decided, I went in with a guy. Of course, I went in with a guy named Richard Bennett. We were going to go to Blown Fuel Flat. So we went to Blown Fuel Flat, and I was having trouble at this finish line. The boat wanted to kite, and then I went with a new driver called Mylon Garrett. And the boat wanted to kite, and I didn't want to get anybody hurt. And then, of course, old Cole, Jim Cole sitting next to me said, Hey, Rick, he says, you want to go fast. So Cole built me a drag boat with Jerry Hanks driving it. And we went, first time we went to Bakersfield, we won. Right off the trailer. It blew everybody's doors off. How fast was that, Rick? It went uh, about 152, 155, about regular. So then right after that, we went to uh, Las Panas. That's when Hanks legged it. We went 173.9 mile an hour in a flat bottom on 40% nitro. Hanks said it's the fastest thing he ever been in his life. And I can agree, it was. It just it just kept building power. Of course, Daryl Buell did the motors then, and uh, I feel that that was the best boat I ever owned. Well, thanks, and, Rick. We know you've done a lot of racing. We're sure glad you're here with us today. I, I appreciate you guys. Thank you.
Thank you for contributing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Nick Barron, and Nick is the owner of Hallett Boats. And Nick, you've been doing this an awful long time. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I started full time 42 years ago. I started as a hobby probably 52 years ago. But my first uh, thing was a cracker box, and that's where it all started. And we stretched out to uh, up to 55 feet now. <laughs> so. When you got started, and you say you got started in the cracker box, how did everything evolve? I mean, was it just that that, that was the type of racing back then, and then you evolved into the flat bottoms, and you evolved into the circle racing? How did that work? Well, <clears throat> the way it started is a cracker box was a fun thing for me. Uh, you'd buy a bear haul, we went out and we'd run it and we could ski with it. It was put our little V860s in there and we had a fun time on Sundays. We'd come back the end of the after the weekend and put all the screws and tighten them up and and get the thing fixed again. And then uh, I hooked up with Rich Hallett and uh, he built me an 18 foot flat bottom in 1959. And that's how the flat bottom started and uh, we built the molds and started producing the fiberglass hull. Where did, what all of a sudden made you decide that you are going to build them out of fiberglass? Well, fiberglass was just getting started in those days. I can actually remember back when you would glass a wood hull and uh, you'd set it outside. They had no catalyst and the sun would cure the fiberglass and that was in the early 50s I'd say but I had friends that were doing that. But uh, I just wanted to get in the boat business. I love boats and, and that's where I took off from. When you built your first fiberglass boat, I remember um, I talked to Bob Leach at Eliminator Boats. The very first one that he tried to pull out of the mold, it stuck. You got any memorable moments like that on your first boat? I've got a lot of uh, <laughs> memories of the first one. We took the uh, first mold, we tried to take it off the plug. Rich Hallett had built me a wood boat. We had to chip it out with, with slivers. It took us a week to get the boat out of the mold. It didn't release, and I thought the mold was done for, but uh, we salvaged the mold. We went ahead and uh, got the boat, uh, built a boat out of the mold, finally. Our first boat we put together, and uh, of all things, I got uh, Barry McGowan uh, to go down to Golden Avenue with us to uh, test this first one. And uh, son of a gun, I thought the business had come to a quick halt. Barry had flipped the boat first time out, and I thought, boy, we do have a turkey on our hands. But as it turned out, it was just one of those uh, things that the swells you get there in uh, Long Beach it, on that particular water. You can't uh, really, uh, the swells and things go against you and it will th throw you over real quick. I know Bunky Muirhead and a lot of the different boys had problems with things flipping in those days. So that's, that's where the flat bottoms went from there. You know, you look back on all the race courses that you've been able to race at. Is there one race course that really stands out in your mind that you really enjoyed racing at? Probably the most fun place would be probably Green Lake in Washington would be in the Marine Stadium. Those two are really nice. The, your, your spectators can get down and watch and be close to it and uh, see the event going on. A lot of them are so far away you can't really uh, see the action. But Green Lake and uh, Marine Stadium are my favorites. You know, uh, right now, you still are, are you still actively participating in some of the ski race boats out there that are running now? We, we, build, a, we build a lot of ski race boats, not a, what you'd call a lot, but we build six or seven a year, but I'm not involved myself. I, I like to take the bigger boats and go have fun and uh, do things with those, but I am fortunate I've got some people using the our 21-foot ski race boat, and it's performing well on the circuit. And, making it very nice for us. When you started back in the boat business in 1959, did you ever realize or envision the fact that you were gonna be building 40-foot boats here in, in the year 2000? I had no idea that. I, I just, I can't imagine. I thought when we built a 21, it would be the end of the world. And Bill and Bob Campbell were building their 24s, and I thought that was a monstrous boat. And then we went to 24s and 27s, 30, 32, uh, 40, 
and now we're working on a new 55. Oh, so, so I don't know where it's going to end. I'm fortunate enough to have uh, nice customers that want something of this magnitude. Sure. You know, Nick, you really are one of the cornerstones of the of the boating industry. What do you see? Where this where where is this going to lead? Where is it going to end up? Well, it's hard to say with our economy the way it is and the way people are making money. It, it, I, I just don't know. I'm kind of looking for a turn down at the present time because of the gas prices. But it, it, I don't think it's slowed it down entirely. But people are, I think the younger generation is just making a lot of money. In the old days, everybody detailed and washed their own boats and put them together themselves. Now they buy them complete. They don't have time enough to even wash them or polish them, so I, I don't know where things are going. Well, Nick, I really enjoyed talking with you. Thank you, Greg. And I hope we can do this again next year. All right? Thank you.